game of policies is just like a game of chess in which you make moves to conquer your enemy's kingdom. And for every move you make happens to be an important one in which if your opponent is not a smart gamer, then he is exposing himself to attack, which will surely get his or her region destroyed. However, the exact political drama happening in Edo State between Godwin Obaseki and Adam Sushomole is just like a game of chess in which the duo are challenging themselves to germinate political tsunami for each other. You will agree with me that Godwin Obaseki saw the future right from time. This is to tell you that he is indeed a wise politician who had ensured that he cleared every tool that Ushomole, Adam Sushomole might use to taunt him or to hunt him as he already knew the outcome of his move towards him. Meanwhile, the first smart game that Obaseki made was that he refused to inaugurate the 14 loyalists of Adam Sushumole into the Edo State House of Assembly if he had done the inauguration when he was frustrated to do so. Hmm. He would have been impeached long time ago, but then he understands the game of Adam Sushumole very well. That is why he has smarted him in words in that area. Which gave him an edge to today and keeps giving tough time to Adam Sushomole in his process of his political hunting. For someone to engage in power tussle with a well a federal politician, such person needs to have vast political experience and think beyond the box. Then that is exactly what Godwin Obaseki did. And with that, he bought respect for himself. As majority thought he would not even last his present state, then with the situation of things, one can say that Godwin Obaseki saw the future. He did not inaugurate the 14 loyalists of Adam Sushomole. If to say he had done their inauguration, hmm, just as been said earlier, he would have been out of the game very long time ago. His first move was a very good one, which protected his stake in a grand way. Thereafter, Godwin Obaseki never showed any form of green light to Adam Sushumole. He derailed from his political terms and conditions completely. Even though he was once the loyal list of Adam Sushumole, which was been, which was when he is yet to assume the governor's office, the posterity will never forget that the fact that Adam Sushumole single-handedly nurtured the ambition of Godwin Obaseki in the year 2016 by ensuring that he succeeds him just immediately after his tenure as the state governor and by virtue of capacity he won the election with the influence of adams Oshumole. and after he assumed office the drag in power muzzle started between the two which is still in existence to date but then adams Oshumole was waiting patiently for the time of the second return of Godwin Obaseki as he had made up his mind that he would ensure that he didn't return as the state governor. However, Adam Sushomole used his influence in APC to disqualify Godwin Obaseki from the gubernatorial race under APC by claiming that his credentials were forced. Mind you, it was the same APC that championed the movement of Godwin Obaseki in the year 2016. So why are they saying his credentials are forced now? It's all because of his disloyalty or to, to Adam Sushumole, which was why they just germinated a political issue to him to kick for him to kick him out of the race. Then this move from Adam Sushumole is a nice move also, as it made Godwin Obaseki to go back to his political den to make a strategy on how he will storm back with full force. He's coming back on very the new news that Adam Sushumole has been suspended as the national chairman of APC. Indeed, politi politics is a very funny game which is meant to be played by the wise. And with the move of Godwin Obaseki, one can inagreeable say that Adam Sushumole undoubtedly lost out one of his principal pieces after which he lost one initially. As of today, you will fully agree with me that Godwin Obaseki is the player that is having higher chances compared to Adam Sushumole. His decamping to PDP is a very nice move because he is not useful in APC. Again, as Adam Sushumole will never open his eyes to see him shine 
in good state of capacity, then the best thing for him is just to defect to a new party in which he would be celebrated like a new bride. And he made a very good decision by choosing PDP. It is inarguable that he will eventually become the flag bearer of PDP to complete to compete with whosoever candidates that APC would be bringing on board, PDP will see Godwin Obaseki as an hot kick because he has earned reasonable public sympathy from the people of Edo State, which will be useful in his victory, if at all he air out his stake. Godwin Obaseki really saw the future, and that is why he is not feeling challenged in his present political tsunami. He had already made his calculations, and it is obvious that is working towards its execution. Don't be surprised when Obaseki eventually returns as the state governor because as at today he's leading in the game and in fact at, at all he can keep acting smart. If at all if he can keep uh, acting uh, smart then his victory will be non-negotiable. It's very wise to have ensured that Adams Ushumole was suspended as the national chairman of the party by using Mr. Oshawu Stephen, who happens to be the world chairman of Adams Ushumole. This is to tell you that he had crippled him to make him irrelevant or perhaps lower his relevancy in the gubernatorial struggle in the state, which is coming up in the month of September. Nigerians keenly await the next move of Ada Adams Ushumole or Godwin Obaseki, which will determine the next prediction before the DD final finally surfaced. Okay, <laughs> wow, this is really interesting. Uh, this um, okay, this uh, article is coming from uh, this uh, Ibrume Sahia, uh, writing this uh, uh, beautiful piece. Of course, some people might not agree with him. Some people might really agree with him, but that is just the way it is. In my opinion, that is just the way it is. Uh, they are just entertaining the people. Okay, this one will say uh, Obaseki is the man. Oh, this one, uh, this one is the person. This one is the person, and all of that. And fair to him, a lot of people from Edo State, they've been, you know, with him. And this issue of a uh, Godfatherism is like it's a it's a hook. It's a big point that majority of the Edo people would not even want because as a result, if Oshomole happens, maybe anybody that comes from APC because it's automatically going to be from Oshomole that is going to compete with any candidate from a PDP. It's automatic, it's an automatic godfatherism which they are even going against. Irrespective of, oh, you know, there are a lot of reasons why they are just condemning and uh, uh, abusing and uh, accusing Obaseki, that oh, it's an ingrate, it's an ingrate, this and this and this and this. And, but the nitty gritty of the whole thing is this godfatherism. And I believe that even by the time Obaseki, paraventure, you wins because in this, you can't say this one is winning, this one is not, is not winning. And like I've been saying, this one might even win in the morning, in the evening again, you hear another thing. If somebody had told the Shomole that Tuesday, last week, that uh, he, by, by the next day, even that evening, or even today, he's not going to be the, uh, he's not going to be in uh, acting capacity. You know, to be the national chairman, he wouldn't have believed. Even his supporters, ne no, they, they never believed it. Those who have been singing here and there, they never believed it. So anything can happen. It might appear that Obaseki is winning or is leading to a very large extent, but anything can still happen. That is just the way it is. But for eventually, if he if he wins, he's not going to. He will not. He himself will not want to install himself because if he if he dares it, because it's now a known fact, a known thing in Edo State now that they don't want this uh, Godfatherism. That if it if it's happening in other places, but as far as Edo is concerned, they don't want it. So so that he himself will not turn around again to now want to become the Godfather in a in a different way, in a in a, in a stylish way, just like uh, Oshimole told all of them that oh. You know, he was boasting, he did this, he defeated this, he defeated uh, this, uh, this uh, Godfatherism. But at the end of the day, it's coming from a different angle. And they quickly saw it, that this guy is doing all of this is for him to be there. Maybe he defeated them so that he will take over. But he didn't say that. So if Paraventure, this man wins and he wants to come and bring the same thing, this Godfatherism definitely is not going to work because it is now a norm now in Edo State that they don't want, they don't even want to entertain a uh, godfatherism because Obaseki has lauded it, even taking it further than what uh, 
will show more a said concerning God for that reason. So you can say whether it's smart or not. You know, in their in their ways, all of them they've been smart. They they are they are, they are, they are smart and are smarting each other. But let's see who is going to get the whole thing at the end of the day. You know, I always surprised when people say, "Oh, this guy is a just is a technocrat. Oh, he's not a politician." And those people who have been saying that at least as at last week, they couldn't say anything as soon as Oshumole <laughs> was suspended. Nobody could say anything. Oh yes, uh, uh, this guy he will he will regret it. But some people are saying whether he fails or whether he wins to become the governor or not that. For him to have even taken that bold step is a is a pass mark for him. That even if he does not win in the PDP that is going, that but at least he's been able to put put a uh, prove a point that he is not that kind of person that can be tossed around. You know, like they will tell you, Lagos is not a do, a do is not Lagos, and and that is just the way it is. Even if he does not win, at, at least this Godfatherism, if we can fight it, because the issue of Godfatherism in this country is something else. Somebody was saying there is nothing wrong that even in other countries they do have Godfatherism, but the way Nigeria takes it, eh, Nigeria, eh, the way the Nigerian people and the, the country takes it is a different ball game entirely. Don't just even we should not just say anything about Godfatherism. You can see the way our politicians behave. So even people will be complaining, oh, that even the religion that they, that was brought that, that that they brought to us, see the way we are doing everything, see the way we are turning everything. The so-called pastor, they have become demigods. You can't even talk to them, even when they are doing the right uh, wrong thing. People say, oh, don't talk to them. Oh, this and this and that. If you criticize them, oh, if you talk about it, say, oh, God will strike you. God will this and that. Everybody will just be quiet. You'll be afraid, even when they are doing what is not right. No, you don't have to talk. You don't have to talk. So everything that is being that is brought into Nigeria, forget Africa. I don't even know what they do in those places. But we talk about Nigeria. They will turn it upside down. So that is why this Godfatherism should not be discouraged. Should be discouraged. Should not be encouraged at all. Because it's, it's killing us. Somebody will just be somewhere, decide whether the person is qualified or not. They will say this one will go, this one will come. And that is what is happening. So, but if even if he does not win, this issue of Godfatherism should be taken away. Because the way they practice the Godfatherism in this country is, is bringing backwardness to us, even as a people. The people do not have say. They don't have say at all. It's unfortunate. Hmm. Okay. Let's hear again your uh, let's hear what you think, guys. What you think about this uh, what this writer is saying. Leave your comment below and let's have your take. Thank you.